Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new updates about the object you see right here. The object that sort of resembles a comet, and even acts as a comet once in a while, and the object located right here in a solar system, but also the object that's not technically a comet at all, instead it's a massive volcano. One of the biggest volcanoes in the solar system, erupting several times every single year. But not the same as the volcanoes right here on planet Earth. Not a volcano that's going to be emitting a lot of very heated lava that's then going to turn into some kind of crust. Instead, this is an example of what's known as the cryovolcano. A volcano that ejects not hot magma or the ash from the planet's mantle, but instead very cold gases and a lot of ice from inside the much colder interior. Something that the scientists have been able to detect around a lot of different objects out there, including the iconic Enceladus, one of the moons of Saturn. And so in this video we're going to be discussing a little bit more about this phenomenon, about this particular object known as 29P, and what the scientists were able to achieve relatively recently. But I guess first, so what exactly is this object, and where exactly is it located? Originally this object was discovered back in 1927, and it was actually only discovered because it suddenly became extremely bright. Its magnitude back then was about 13, and it was one of the brighter objects visible in this particular part of the night skies. But it then decreased in luminosity by about 3 magnitudes, and already created a bit of a mystery. What exactly happened here? And so back then this was established to be some kind of a comet. But it turned out to be a comet that increases in brightness by as much as 1000 times, pretty much at least 5 to 6 times per year. In other words, it's basically some kind of a cyclical comet. Or a comet that increases in brightness with relatively regular periods. But in order for this to be possible, this comet will have to orbit around the Sun really, really fast, at least 7.3 times per year. That's sort of impossible, it would be way too close to the Sun, with the scientists eventually realizing that something else was happening here. It wasn't just becoming a comet, some other phenomenon was happening on the surface. Especially because this brightness seemed to disappear within just two weeks, as if this object suddenly became super bright and then dimmed in just a few days. And back then, nothing like this has ever been seen before. And so eventually the scientists realized that first of all this had to be some kind of a asteroid or cometary object relatively far away from the Sun. But second of all, the emissions that seemed to be happening every 57 days were probably the result of the actual spin of the object, not so much of its orbit. In other words, as it spins around, once in a while it exposes a different side to the Sun, and because of this, this seems to initiate some kind of a reaction on the surface. Although even today, it's not actually certain what exactly happens here. And further analysis established that this is what's known as a centaur. It's not a regular asteroid. As of today, only a few hundred of these objects have been discovered so far, and they're essentially very small icy bodies orbiting between Jupiter and Neptune, and very likely stuck in these orbits on semi-permanent basis. Today the scientists believe that they were probably captured from the Kuiper's belt, or basically from much farther away, even farther than Pluto, eventually being attracted to Jupiter, getting stuck in the orbit between Jupiter and Neptune for at least a few cycles. But because of the gravitational influences from Jupiter, these orbits are not permanent. For example, for this particular object, it's believed it might stay in this orbit for maybe a thousand years or so, maybe 2000 maximum. It will probably change its orbit after the year 4000. And so this is a somewhat dynamic region where many objects exist for a few thousand years and then migrate somewhere else. Some of them might even become moons of other objects, such as the moon Phoebe that's believed to be one of these ancient objects that might have been captured by Saturn a few million or a few billion years ago. And in terms of the orbital similarities or even the properties, quite a few of these centaurs, including Phoebe, are somewhat related. And approximately 30 of these objects have been discovered to have cometary comas, with some potentially also being cryovolcanoes as well. But the ones that have been confirmed are 2060 Chiron, 60558 Ekaklis, and the object we're discussing today, 29P Schwarzman Walkman, named after its original discoverers. So basically, three potential comets, and only one, this one, that seems to be a very active and very periodic cryovolcano, with an orbit that's surprisingly circular for an object of its kind. No other comet known to us has a circular orbit like this, and being approximately 60 kilometers in diameter and taking approximately 15 years to orbit the Sun, 
All of these unusual emissions suggest that this object must be relatively new to this part of the solar system. If it existed here for several thousand years, it would not have these very powerful emissions so regularly. It's just not big enough to maintain this for such a long period of time. Yet it seems to be able to do so 7 times per year, every 57 days. And as I mentioned, sometimes the brightness increases by up to a thousand times. As a matter of fact, one of the brightest eruptions was back in November of 2022. It seems to have released approximately 1 million tons of cryomagma, once again resulting in a major increase in brightness, making this object visible from really far away, with the brightness itself being created by light reflected off various particles of ice or what's known as cryomagma. All of these crystals suddenly emitted by this object simply increase the brightness dramatically by reflecting all of the sunlight all at once. But up until this point, all of these emissions were still a little bit unpredictable. All of them would happen very suddenly, taking approximately a couple of hours to start, and would then disappear after two weeks. None of them have been predictable, and all of them were extremely sudden. And you can actually find out very detailed observations and pretty much everything we know about this object by following the page in the description where the scientists from the British Astronomical Association provide an extremely detailed observation going back several years. And turns out that the recent eruption that happened in April of 2023 represented the first time ever that the scientists were able to successfully predict the eruption before it happened. In other words, by observing certain things happening on the surface, they were able to make a hypothesis predicting the eruption just hours before it actually occurred. Thus, to some extent, explaining how all of this might work and what drives this particular volcano to erupt so many times per year and produce so many emissions which can hopefully help us explain how other major cryovolcanoes, such as the one on Ceres, work as well. And so in this case, while observing this back in March of 2023, astronomers noticed that the light coming from the comet was extremely faint, faintest we've ever seen. And to the scientists, this was the sign that there was less gas leaking from the comet, suggesting that there was a lot of pressure building up inside, right underneath the crust, implying that the eruption was about to happen. And in this case, the scientists believe that as the sun weakens the crust, the internal pressure from within the comet causes the outer shell to crack, eventually producing a large enough hole to create a new cryovolcano, which then ends up shooting all of this into space all at once, representing a very intriguing cycle of buildup of pressure on the inside, release of all of this material all at once, and then a somewhat long quiet period for at least a few weeks. And because in this case the brightness increased by at least 10 times, once again this was a pretty powerful emission as well. Although what the scientists were really hoping to achieve are actual observations from the James Webb Space Telescope, specifically as the eruption happens. And unfortunately, even though they received some time on the telescope, it was only scheduled to observe this back in February of 2023. And this is when the comet was already fading, so the observation was during the quiescent period. Which basically means that we're not going to be discovering what's happening here just yet. But the scientists are definitely hoping to get even more time on the James Webb Space Telescope because now they might have figured out how to predict these eruptions and thus how to schedule the next observations a little bit better. They're really hoping to catch the emissions right as they happen in order to see what's actually happening here. So far, all we know is that this object emits these particles at really fast velocities of up to 1 km per second and it does so extremely quickly, in just a few hours. And since a lot of these emissions also represent various primordial materials that essentially delivered carbon-rich molecules to planet Earth as well, in some sense this can also help us answer questions about the origins of life, and potentially a lot of other questions as well. But I guess more importantly, this is really the only such object we have in the solar system, and so its uniqueness makes this a perfect target for future observations. There's really no other cryovolcano that's as active as this. And you can learn more about this object in the video in the description from a few years ago. But overall, hopefully in the next few years, we might be able to get more observations and potentially answer some of the questions about what is actually happening here. How can it possibly increase in brightness so much so suddenly and then dim by up to a thousand times for several weeks at once? No other object in the solar system does that. Actually, no other object we've detected ever does that. Definitely the strangest asteroid, comet, whatever it is, out there. But unfortunately, at least for now, that's all we know. Check out the British Astronomical Association webpage 
with pretty much all of the up-to-date data in the description below. Subscribe if you'd like to find out more about this object in some of the future videos, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. And maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.